car prices are skyrocketing, but that might change soon. Check this out. Yeah, so let me divide it up into two different cases, right? You've got the electric vehicle side of the market, and then you've just got the rest of the car market. Yeah. So the average car price right now is about $48,000. I never thought in my lifetime I would see a starting price of a new car be at $48,000. The starting price of an electric vehicle, the, the average of an electric vehicle, is about $53,000. So you take the 48 and you put the 53 together, and you go, man, $50,000 for either an electric vehicle or a new car. Now, I just came away from Monterey Car Week a week ago, and we're looking at eight cars that went for $10 million. So here's what we're dealing with, guys. We're dealing with low volume and high, in, high interest in vehicles. So people want to buy these cars, but they can't afford them. And the reason that there's low volume right now at dealerships nationwide is that during COVID, obviously, manufacturing facilities were shut down. Then compound that with the supply chain issue. Now you have vehicles sitting on lots like the Ford Lightning in Detroit, where you can't actually finish the vehicle and get it out to dealerships nationwide because the parts aren't available. Now, the way they make it sound, it's like car prices are never to come back down. But hey, let me tell you guys, if you could hold off on buying a car, then I would wait. Now, of course, if you really need a car right now and it's very urgent for you guys, then who am I to stop you, right? Now, I'm just saying, like, if you can push the car purchase off just a little bit more, then that's probably what I would do. And that's because the way the data is going, better prices may be coming soon. Long story short, there's an overproduction of cars and it looks like more price cuts may be on the way. Boots on the ground information here, people are saying deals will start in about two to three months. Now this is coming from on the ground Intel that has been literally following this for a while. The dealers are still overpaying at the auction so it's gonna take some time for it to kind of get to its lowest levels. But the amount of repos are going insane. Wells Fargo is paying a premium to tow truck drivers to take their orders to the front of the line. Yeah, maybe just a matter of time now before we actually see those car prices plummet. Now I've been watching the market myself and I gotta say, the US car market has shifted into the lower gear in just a matter of a few months. After average car prices hit record highs as recently as last summer, some analysts are now predicting that the oversupply of vehicles is gonna lead to a price war that could send car prices falling. A recent report from UBS estimates that the global car production will exceed sales by 6% this year, leaving an excess of 5 million vehicles that will require price cuts in order to get them sold off these dealership lots. Now these price cuts, they might not happen until the latter half of 2023, but automakers are already preparing for price war and some electric vehicle makers, they're even slashing their prices as early as now. Basically, a high risk of overproduction and growing price pressures as a result. Now we can see that the price war has already unfolded with the whole EV space, right? And they're expecting the exact same thing to spread into the combustion engine segment, basically cars that burn gas. But we're expecting this toward the second half of 2023, which is right about now. Now to be specific, makers of family cars are most likely to suffer from price cuts while luxury car makers are expected to hold up a little bit better. Now the EV car makers might take a major hit due to the combination of soaring energy costs and high prices that put many consumers out of reach. Now you can see that in January, Elon Musk's Tesla slashed the price of its cars by up to 8,000 euros in the UK. Some of the cheaper models are now around the same price range as the mass market brands like Kia. And the same with other car manufacturers like Ford Motor Company, Lucid, they've been reacting to Tesla's cuts by lowering their own EV prices. And we also have to take into account dealer markups when taking incentives into consideration, right? So dealers mark up prices, they offer incentives, and they still sell cars at over MSRP. I like to call them stealer ships, to be honest with you. It's all a big front to make it seem like people are actually getting discounts and incentives. The car market went crazy during C19 and dealerships are just trying desperately to continue those profits. But let me tell you guys, it ain't happening. I could definitely see them hiding cars to make it not look like there's such an oversupply issue. I mean, yeah, the auto market, it is finally offering relief to consumers after year after year of supply shortages and soaring car prices and customers getting bent over the financing countertop. Now, in the last six months, average new vehicle prices saw their largest January to July drop in a decade, completely flipping the car market. Now, the average price for a new vehicle in July was sitting at $44,700, which is a massive flip of $3,243 compared to the price that it was back in January, as recently reported by Kelly Blue Book. Now, 
prices have fallen by 1.7% since the start of the year. Now that is the first significant decline in the car prices since supply shortages started affecting the industry back in 2021. And so basically last year's car market was what experts called inflation gone wild with consistent transaction price increases of 10 to 12% year over year. Now, this price surge was primarily driven by low inventory levels. Now that supply of new vehicles has recovered, new vehicle inventory increase from 1.75 million to January sitting at 1.95 million. And that was at the end of June. And high auto loan rates are also suppressing demand. And we're seeing some recent price decreases. Now, of course, here's some of the price drops that we're seeing on the list here. So we got Tesla sitting at $7,166 decrease from $62,272 to $55,106. We got Land Rover, $6,882 price decrease from $106,834 to $99,952. Lincoln, $3,000 decrease from $68,000 down to $65,000. Volvo, $2,700 decrease from $59,000 to $57,000. Mercedes-Benz, $2,233 decrease from $84,000 to $82,000. Fiat, $2,200 decrease from $32,000 down to $30,000. Volkswagen, $1,900 decrease from $39,000 to $37,000. Buick, 15, almost $1,600 decrease, $39,000 down to $37,000. Polestar, Never even heard of that car company. $1,500 decrease, $64,000 down to $62,000. Nissan, $1,200 decrease from $36,000 down to $35,000. Now still pretty steep if you look at the sticker price, but hey, not bad for a start, right? And we're expecting these prices to continue to fall. Also the electric vehicle or the EV segment, they're seeing significant price declines. Now according to Krebs, the decline in EV prices has been a key driver of overall industry-wide price moderation. The average transaction price for EVs dropped from over $61,000 in January to about $53,000 in June, thanks to price cuts from manufacturers like Tesla, coupled with a high inventory of EVs sitting on the lots. Now, Kelly Blue Book, they're reporting that current inventory of EVs in the United States would take approximately 103 days to sell, which is nearly double the supply of new vehicles in general, which, by the way, stands at 53 days. Now the target is a 60 day supply. Now this is considered normal for the industry, but I think we're well on our way to a rebound that'll put car buyers in a much better position in order to find deals as dealerships and automakers face increased pressure to be able to sell their inventory. Automakers are raising their incentive spending while dealerships are offering larger discounts off sticker prices. Kelly Blue Book reports that the average incentive spend from manufacturers was $2,048 or 4.2% of the purchase price back in July. New cars are also selling for more than $600 below sticker price on average. So yeah, new vehicle prices are still higher than they were a year ago, but the average prices have only increased 1.6% over the last 12 months. I mean, just compare this to a situation that we had a year ago when year over year price increases was like 12%, right? You'll definitely feel like the car market is certainly turning in favor of the buyers pretty soon. By the way, if you own a home, make sure your home is protected. Get your free home warranty quote. There's a link in the description down below this video. Now, if you want more car market updates and basic, basically financial news that affects you and your wallet, make sure to hit the subscribe button and also tap that notification bell. And hey, if you guys are liking the content and you want to show your support, do me a favor, drop a quick like for the video. It goes a long way for the YouTube algorithm. Not to mention it also makes my day. Appreciate that, you guys. But speaking of, seriously, I don't know if you guys have actually noticed this, but it's getting harder and harder to find new cheap cars. You know what I'm saying? Like they have this like $20,000 or below barometer that's sort of an unofficial price threshold for an affordable new car, right? And guess what? In July, just one car model, the Mitsubishi Mirage had an average new vehicle transaction price of below $20,000. Five years ago, there were dozens of vehicles that met that pricing criteria. In fact, I thought like cars over $20,000 were kind of expensive 10 years ago, but really there aren't as many inexpensive new cars as there used to be. Transaction price doesn't tell the full story, of course. That price records what the average buyer pays and that depends on different factors like markups and promotions by car dealers and any other kind of add-ons selected by buyers at the time of purchase. Manufacturers like Kia, 
Hyundai, and Nissan, in addition to Mitsubishi, they currently sell cars whose base models carry a below $20,000 sticker price. But this list has definitely gotten smaller over the past five or so years. People are even able to try and find like entry-level vehicles with a $15,000 starting price as recently as five years ago, but not today. We gotta keep in mind that a vehicle is a means of getting from point A to point B in a safe manner. And that should be our main focus when we buy a new or used car. Any add-ons or additional upgrades or a more luxury type vehicle really depends on whether we have additional disposable income. Now, if not, you know, it's definitely not worth the headaches to try to keep up with our friends, keeping up with the Joneses, families, coworkers and whatnot. Uh, that's just my two cents, guys. But nowadays, you know, people want all these different features in their car, automatic climate control, CarPlay screen, parking sensors and all that stuff. You don't really need all that stuff. But of course, it ain't tricking if you got it. So if you got it, get what you want. Automakers know this to be true and they use it to their advantage in marketing. They try to make it seem like they're offering affordable vehicles when it comes down to it, right? But they're not building any of those lower price models. Instead, automakers will actually make more of the higher end models with features that consumers want. In fact, car sales in the luxury car segment have significantly increased. They now account for about 20% of total new car sales, up from roughly 10% to 13% before the C-19 pandemic. Five years ago, guys, there were like 12 vehicles selling for an average price of more than $100,000. Today, there are 32 vehicles selling for an average price of more than 100 grand. And these tallies, they don't even include super exotics from companies like Ferrari, Lamborghini, and Rolls Royce. Now, adding to the math is the inflation that surged for new and used cars during the pandemic era, leading to higher vehicle prices. Materials and supplies became even more expensive driving up production costs for automobile companies and those higher costs, they're being passed down to buyers. Higher interest rates, they're also helping to keep the would-be buyers out of the car market for now. They just can't keep up with it. And since buyers who generally shop for the least expensive car tend to be budget constrained, their absence from the market may be skewing average purchase prices higher. Matter of fact, the average new car vehicle price today is sitting at $48,000, which is up from about $30,000 back in 2012. Now let's talk tips for finding cars at good prices, right? So number one, know your budget, really. Most car buyers, they use monthly payments to try to conceptualize how expensive a car is. Don't do that. You should know your overall budget before shopping or by using an online automobile loan calculator. Otherwise, it's just kind of hard to know if you're actually getting a good deal. These auto loan calculators, they're free and they let you work backwards. You plug in a monthly payment that fits your budget along with other estimated information like the loan's term and interest rate. The output would be the total vehicle price that a buyer can afford. Casting a wide net helps too. Like a wider vehicle search yields more potential inventory and leverage against other dealerships. Now, some markets are better than others. And looking even an hour or two away could potentially get you a more competitive deal. In fact, I've even been willing to buy an airplane ticket to find a deal that was significantly better than my local area. I saved $6,000 doing that one time. Airline ticket only cost me 300 bucks. And don't forget to get those prices in writing beforehand. Confirm the car prices in writing with a dealer before actually walking in the door. Matter of fact, nine times out of 10, I'm negotiating the deal down to the price that I want before I even leave my house. Now, if they refuse, that's a red flag. Probably code for, they're gonna try to rip you off when you get there. And that goes with financing too. Don't depend on a dealership's financing offer. Dealers can profit off of consumers by offering a higher than necessary interest rate. And so this is why it's a good idea to get pre-approved for your auto loan. You can check with your local bank, credit union, online lender before actually setting foot in a dealership. That way you got the leverage in the negotiation process. You guys can even ask for a better rate at the dealership. Look guys, if you made it this far in the video, drop a quick like for the video, also subscribe, and I'm gonna catch you guys on the next one.